chapter four on internal loadings in the structure members. So of course the structure members that we talk about here is other than trust. Trust is simple. Trust is just the two force members, only one force inside. We're talking about more complicated members now. All right, so let's start. So we'll be looking at the members that the loading, the loading will not be confined to apply at the joint. They will be populated everywhere on your members or on your structures. So basically, there are a few types of loading, you know. Concentrate load, distribute loads, and torque, torque, moment. So let's look at this simple, uh, support, simply supported beam on the loading. And everybody knows that important issue is what are the forces developed due to this external force inside the structure. So that's exactly what you have learned in the previous course. All right, so there are three forces. If you cut across sections at any arbitrary locations of your member, you will see three forces developed. Shear force. Actual force, bending moment. Now the tricky part is action reactions. So this moment is the same as that moment, but they are in the opposite directions. So that's the tricky part. So it depends on where the load loading, uh, where the forces are acting on, the directions might be different, although they are the same force. So shear force. Shear force. Action reactions, they are the same. Actual force, actual force. So we need to define the sign conventions carefully. So here is the sign conventions for the internal forces. Shear force, actual force, and bending moment. All right, so this is what you learned in the previous course, mechanics and materials. And I'm trying to hit on it again, make sure that you have the proper preparations. Okay, of course the mechanics material, they, they get one step further, getting from here to the stress. So stress then tied up with the material properties and then eventually tied up with your design. Okay, so before you get into design, you need to brush yourself up with the force stress relationship. But in this course, we'll not be touching upon those. We'll be touching, we'll be staying in this domain, but get into the deflections, indeterminate structure analysis, and so on. So, sign convention, coming back. There are three forces, internal forces, actual force, shear force, and bending moments. These forces are due to the external force. So all of these have to be defined properly, which is their positive direction and which is their negative direction. So for instance, the W, the distributive force, is defined as positive upward. Now, maybe in different notations or different textbooks, you'll see opposite definitions, but in this, of course, I'm going to define this W as positive, acting upward. Actual force, as long as you see pulling, extensions of the components, then I call it positive actual force. Shear force depends on which sides of the elements that you're looking at. If you're looking at the left-hand sides of the elements, then upward is positive shear force. If you're looking at the right-hand side of the elements, then downward is a positive shear force, all right? Bending moments, as long as it's going like that, acting on the elements, then I call it positive. Okay, be careful. You start to get confused very quickly. 
All right, so negative defined as the reverse directions. So this is a coordinate that I adopt x and y. So this is x and this is y. Coordinate is also very important because we start to get into curvatures and differentiations. So, so can you calculate the shear force of bending moments at this particular cross sections? Of course, you can obtain those information from equilibriums. The things that you need to pay attention here now is the sign conventions, positive, negative. Okay, so we all know that one important conclusion from the previous course is these forces are related. The external force, the internal force, they are related mathematically through equilibrium. So look at this elements here, external force, shear force, bending moments. Now I uh, temporarily ignore the actual force because actual force is, does not play any role here because you don't have a horizontal force component. So based on equilibrium, I can set up these two equations. If you don't know where these two equations come from, you need to go back to mechanics of materials and review that part. But basically, I tell you, it's not difficult. It's, it's just an equilibrium. So for instance, W times dx is just a force pulling up. So this force plus that force minus that force achieve equilibrium. All right, very simple. So the result is this dv over dx equal to w. So same thing, you can do a moment equilibrium, and then the conclusion is that dm over dx equal to shear force. So these are probably uh, one important conclusions that you can obtain from mechanics of materials. Okay, so look at this structure. So I want to uh, see how can I can utilize these two equations and set up some relationships. So let's say I have a structure, beam loaded, and I, chose, I choose uh, two cross sections, C and D. And I, I try to set up the uh, shear force relationship between the two sections, as well as the bending moment relationship between the two sections. So here, based on these two equations, I can set up from the first equations. Just move dx to the other side and integrate from c to d. This is x-axis, right? So integrate from c to d. So on both sides, then the left-hand side give you shear force d minus shear force c is equal to integrations from c to d, w dx. So it's telling you that the external force is going to create the shear force change. Okay, hmm, not too bad. The other similar equation is coming from the second equations there. You move that and then integrate on both sides. So it tell you that the moment changed from C to D, the moment changed between C and D is something to do with the shear force. Hmm. Okay, so not bad. Now how about concentrate force? Concentrate force. So. If I have a downward concentrate force, what is the effect on that? So it tells me that the shear force is going to be changed instantaneously, right at that point. So if I draw the shear force distribution, we call shear force diagrams, then I know right at that point, I'm going to see a shear force jump due to the appearance of that force. So here. So I'm plotting the shear force values respect to the x-axis, that's called shear force diagrams. If you see a concentrated force pointing downward, the effect on the shear force is 
you're going to see a shear force jump. If the force is pulling up, then the shear force will jump upward. Right? So that's very uh, easy to see from equilibrium. How about if I have a torque, a moment apply, external moment apply? Then you can expect that we're going to see a moment jump. So if I have apply a moment there, so I'm going to see a moment jumped. So it depends on the directions of this torque. If I'm doing counterclockwise, it's going to be a negative jump. If I'm doing a clockwise moment, it's going to be a positive jump. So all of these can be obtained from equilibrium if you follow the definitions of sign conventions very well. OK, so far so good, right? This is uh, just a review of what you uh, learned before. All right, so, so let's take a look. The important thing is, the important thing throughout your structure analysis and design is a shear force mating moment diagrams. So you'll be, uh, you will need to be able to plot your shear force and mating moment diagrams for all kinds of structures. So this is a beam, and this is where the loading is applied. It's a concentrated force downward P at the mid, mid span. You're asked to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. So relationship goes like that. Right? So you can draw those uh, diagrams with assistance of that two relationship. Right, so here you go. We start. So, of course, the first thing you do is you analyze and obtain the reaction forces. Hmm. Okay, so go. Each reaction force is carry P over 2. So, P over 2, P over 2. So, you jump up, go. The, the reason that this is flat is because it says dv dx equal to w, the slope of shear force. The slope of shear force is equal to the external distributive force. There's no external distributive force, so the slope of shear force is equal to zero. So that's why it's flat. And then you hit this concentrated force, so downward concentrated force will bring the shear force down by that magnitude, and then become constant again because there's no external distributive force there. So constant slope, uh, zero slope, I'm sorry, zero slope. And then until you hit the reaction there, which bring the shear force back to the neutral. OK, so that's very easy to construct. Everybody have a little sense of mechanics material should be able to do that. Now, moments. I'm just trying to explain to you from equations viewpoint so that you can use that to set up your diagrams much quicker. OK, so what does the moment diagrams look like? Oh, here. I follow the second equation, say that the slope of moment is equal to the shear force. So shear force for this region is a constant. So that means the slope of the moment is a constant. So here, constant slope. And this is positive shear force, so positive slope. So you're ex anticipating you see a positive slope there following the magnitude of the shear force. All right, so slope here is P over 2. Here, the other part, this part, the shear force is minus P over 2. So minus P over 2, the slope of moment will be minus. So this is minus P over 2. OK, so then you can find the maximum values of the moments. You know the slope. You know the locations. So that is it. Now, at this point, I want to bring out another equation. This is the tricky part. Be careful. I want to bring out another equation. Here. Do you still remember what that equation is? m over ei equal to d squared y over dx squared. What is that equation? Do you still remember the name of that equation? This is a very important equation. What, what, what is that equation called? <laughs> uh, 
I'm summarizing uh, half of the uh, mechanics of material course in half lecture. So what is our equation called? Curvature, moment curvature equation. So curvature of your beam is related to your moment, your bending moment. So that's called moment curvature equations. If you don't know, again, where this equation is coming from, please go back, dig out your mechanics material book. I hope you haven't sold that book. Dig out the book and then read that part, and then you feel comfortable. So it's called moment curvature equations. Basically, this is curvature. This is curvature. Second order derivative is called curvature. First order is called slope. So this is curvature. So it tells you this. If you have a positive moment, then the curvature is positive. And if you define x and y like that, positive curvature is concave shape like that. So this is called co positive curvature. So positive curvature corresponding to positive moment. Now, if you have a negative curvature, then the curvature become negative. So negative curvature for the coordinate system of x and y is a convex curve like that. So this equation basically link up the internal force to deformations. So this is a very important step. You link the internal force to the deformations of your components. Now, previously, we only analyzed the internal force. So force, 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 force. They are all forces. But now, because of these equations, we can connect to deformations. All right, so let me show you what, you, what I mean. If this is positive moment, so you anticipate that the curvature will be all positive or all con con uh, con concave, right? So co curvature will be all concave. So it tells you that your deformations should go through such a form, should be in such a form. They are all concave throughout. But of course, the curvature at each individual location depends on the magnitude of m. So the curvature at each location will be different. But it tells you that they are all this shape, con con concave. Okay, but exactly how this deform, of course, in mechanics material, you have a way to do it. You double integrate, right? So you have ways to do it. Now, in our course, we have more ways to solve that, not only doing integration. As a matter of fact, integration is not encouraged because it's very limited. Okay, we don't encourage people to do that through integrations. There are many, many other, other ways to do it. All right, so still review, right? So here comes the tricky part. Now, in practice, in practice, if you go to a consulting firm, go to a construction company, you open it up and take a look, unfortunately, the moments are not plotted the way we do here. We are plotted based on a coordinate system, x and y. So the positive is always that direction. So you see a moment like that. But in practice, the engineers prefer to draw the moment at the tensile side of your components. Oh, that's very tricky, right? But I know that in the statics and in mechanics and materials, uh, the instructors start to introduce the tensile side moment uh, concept, right? So let me just reinforce that. In school, in university, you can analyze and plot the moment like that. But if you go out, it's not the way it has been practiced. It has been practiced to plot the moment at the tensile side. OK, so where is the tensile side of the component? Obviously, this is the tensile side. That is a compression side. 
So on top is a compression side, at the bottom is a tensile side. So you plot your moment at the tensile side. So this is what happened. So you notice that your deformations looks like that, and you identify the tensile side is this side, so you need to plot your moment at the tensile side. All right? So this is a notation. This is a conventions that follow our mathematical defined coordinate system and mathematical equations. And this is a convention that eventually the practicing engineer decided to adopt as well as in a lot of design codes. They use uh, tensile side moment conventions to uh, display your moment. Now, there's a perfect reason for that. There's a perfect reason for that. The reason is this. The reinforced concrete, in the reinforced concrete structures, the reinforcement, the reinforced part, are always placed more at the tensile side. Because the concrete, you know, concrete cannot take tension. They can take compression very well. So as a result, you need to reinforce the bottom part because the bottom part is under tensions. So concrete cannot take tensions. So you have to put a lot of reinforcements, the steel bars underneath. So this is kind of reminder to the structure engineers that, OK, now I need to put a lot of reinforcement at the bottom here to ensure that the structure will not open or cracked. So that they come with a good intention. They don't come with uh, intention to confuse you. Okay. So in this course, my requirement is this: I will indicate clearly which notation you need to follow. Okay. Most likely, I will I will indicate to you that you need to plot the moment at the tensile side. Okay. So previously, these kind of relationships only give you the very consistent moment plotting. But eventually, you still need to give me the tensile side plotting. So the reason is because when you go out, they will be always doing that in the practice. But in order to do that, you need to know the deflection shape. So that is tricky. So here. Now basically, this is what happened. You have a structure under loads. Now, if you want to analyze and plot the shear force diagrams, shear force bending moment diagrams, you always go through the steps, step by step. So from loading external loads to shear force diagrams, you can use this relationship. dv dx equal to w. w is an external force. And you can go from shear force to bending moment. You can utilize that relationship. Dm over dx equal to shear force. But don't forget, when you follow this kind of definitions, they are mathematically defined. So the bending moment diagrams that you produced is consistent in mathematical sense. They may not necessarily plot it on the tensile side. OK, so in order to plot the moment at the tensile side, you need to know the deflection shapes. All right, so you use the moment curvature relationships to plot the deformation shape. So once you have the deformation shape, then you can go ahead, replot your moment diagrams so that they appear at the tensile side of your components. So there. So that, that is uh, procedures. If you don't have a good feeling, uh, you can use the mathematics to help you and then try to come up with something that uh, everybody understands. Now, sooner or later, a very experienced structure engineer, they can go directly. They can go directly from loading to quantitative deflection shape. You, ha you don't have to know exactly how much it deflects, but you just need to know the shape of the deflections. So with that, then you can quickly draw the moment diagrams. Um, you don't have to go through one, two, three, so four, five steps. So you can do that and do some sort of simple analysis, and you can draw the moment diagrams correctly. OK, uh, 
I think it's a good place to um, make a stop. Otherwise, we'll get into too much of this. Okay, let me stop here and uh, talk to you next Monday. <laughs>